He was a Nazi death camp survivor who emigrated to Canada, became a doctor, and eventually led the fight for women to have legal abortions. Dr. Henry Morgenthaler was revered by some as a hero, denounced by others as a murderer. Yet there is no doubt that he changed the course of history in this country. Morgenthaler died of a heart attack on May the 29th, 2013, at the age of 90. Adrian Arsenault has this look back on the life of a man at the centre of an extremely controversial issue. Defiance. It is what once saved Dr. Henry Morgenthaler. It is certainly what pained him, what earned him adoration and gratitude in Canada, as well as decades of threats and contempt. Bravery in abundance and not a moment's regret. His best day ever, he was fond of saying, was January 28, 1988, the day Canada's Supreme Court tossed out Canada's laws against abortion. Bravo for the Supreme Court of Canada. Bravo for the women of Canada. An end to the laws that determined abortions could only be done in hospitals only when approved by committees. A milestone moment for Canadian women delivered by a man from Poland. He survived the Nazi death camps of Auschwitz and Dachau, had every reason to just try to build a quiet, comfortable, peaceful life. But he chose to fight, he said, to protect women. We believe that any woman should have the right to ask for a termination of pregnancy within the first three months of pregnancy. In 1969, he walked away from a lucrative private practice as a family doctor and began performing illegal abortions in Montreal, ultimately thousands of them. In an interview just a few years ago, he explained that he knew exactly what he was taking on in those early years. I knew that if I started doing abortions in a uh, on a bigger scale that eventually I'd have to face the criminal code and prosecution. Indeed he did, spending 10 months in jail. Ultimately, he opened clinics across the country wherever he felt women were at risk. And like clockwork, there were raids, protests, charges, and worse, violence. Even after the Supreme Court victory, the street got ugly. His Toronto clinic torched, bombed, a sniper plotted to kill him, and the shouting did not stop. Not the police, not the Those who once stood on the clinic steps guarding the man and the cause have nothing but gratitude for Morgenthaler today. He was determined not to be stopped, you know. He, and I think the Holocaust experience was very key to that, because he saw what could happen if you don't stand up for what you believe in. It's a measure of Canada now that Morgan Toller's clinics today are still deeply conscious of security, often adorned with bulletproof windows. Decades after those abortion laws were struck down in this country, there are still some who want to reopen the debate. Anti-abortion postcards passed out in the Prime Minister's writing recently. And Morgan Toller foes, far from remembering him as a heroic figure now. Will his death change anything? I don't know, but I do hope that uh, you know, th this discussion will be ongoing so that people, more people realize what abortion is and what he did to children in the womb. Even an honorary degree, even the Order of Canada, every award greeted with anger by some. But Dr. Henry Morgenthaler was made of steely stuff. If I have to die tomorrow by an assassin's bullet, well, at least I've achieved something in my life. He always wanted, he said, to leave a mark, to feel he accomplished something, that he mattered. No friend or foe could deny that he did just that. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Toronto. Throughout the battle for legalized abortions, Morgenthaler faced violence. In 1988, the laws changed and Canada became one of the first countries to offer legalized abortions. But that did not stop protesters from threatening the doctor, his staff, and even bombing his clinic. They were radical times, and the issue of abortion rights brought out the rage in some people. The Nationals' Wendy Mesley spoke to the people who knew Henry Morgenthaler and his cause. Some friends, some not. Here's what they had to say as they remember the man called Henry. So you helped him fight to open a clinic here in Toronto? Yes, yes, me and many others, of course, yes. What happened to women who wanted abortions before that? Well, it was very difficult. If you were a middle-class woman, you had access to abortion. You could go to Buffalo, or you could go to Montreal, or you had a private gynecologist. But for teenagers, or women from the North, or women from First Nations Reserves, or women new to the country, 
they didn't have the access. So it was a very privileged access, and we supposedly had universal health care. It just seemed to bring something out in him which was remarkable. For the last 20 years, I fought for the right of women to have access to safe medical abortion so that their lives, their health, their fertility, and their dignity be protected. By the end of his career, Morgenthaler had successfully opened six clinics in Canada offering legal and safe abortions to women. But the fight for abortion rights remains a hotbed issue today. Anti-abortion activists are determined to bring an end to abortion in Canada. It's an issue that the Conservative government under Prime Minister Harper has refused so far to reopen.